This video is to show how to configure the management authentication on the IBM Access Manager all-in-one appliance. For this demonstration, I have created an external LDAP. This external LDAP was populated as follows. The LDAP has an admin user, a user called Bob, a user called Dick, a user called Harry, and a user called Tom. In addition to the users, the LDAP contains four groups. A admin group, which has two members, the admin user and Tom. A audit group, which has a member called Harry. The IT help group has a member called Dick. And the IT sec group has a member called Tom. Log in to the LMI console as the admin user. Select manage system settings. Select management authentication. On the main panel, select Remote LDAP User Registry. On the LDAP tab, enter the host name and the port. I'm using non-SSL, so I'm using port 389. I'm not using anonymous bind. I'm using the admin user as the bind DN. And I'm entering the admin user password. On the LDAP General tab, enter the user attribute, which is UID. Note that for the groups, the CN is the attribute used. Enter the group member attribute, which in my case is the unique member. Enter the base DN, which is O equals red. And then enter the administrative group DN. Any member of this group will be able to log into the LMI or perform REST calls. Since we're using 389, I did not enter any information on the LDAP SSL panel. Select Safe. Deploy Changes. With these changes deployed, any user that is a member of this admin group can now log on to the LMI or use the REST API calls. Log out as the admin user. Log in as Tom with Tom's password. And you will see Tom is authenticated and has access to all the elements. If you now authenticate with the admin user, the password you have to use is the admin user password as it is stored in LDAP. You now authenticate it as the admin user as he exists in LDAP. Should there be ever any problems accessing the LDAP server, you always can fall back to using the locally defined admin user. In order to do this, when you authenticate, simply add the user admin at local and you use the password that was defined on the appliance. Make sure that this password is stored in a secure place and is not forgotten. This completes the setup for the management authentication. If further refinement is needed in the authorization of what users can do on the LMI or using REST APIs, management authorization has to be configured. In order to configure management authorization, select Management Authorization, select Enable Authorization Roles, deploy the change. One thing is to note, if you enable authorization roles, you will have to go back to Management Authentication, select LDAP General, and change the Administrative Group DN. The Administrative Group DN will be used as the search suffix for any group membership of a user. So in this case, we want to use other groups besides CN equals admin, we have to change the administrative group DN to OU equals groups. This means we can use any groups under this container to be assigned to a specific role. Select Next and select Save and deploy the changes.
return to the management authorization and within management authorization we're going to select first the global administrator role we will select remote LTAP user registry we will select edit over the groups we will search for a group in this case the group we want to add is the IT sec for IT security group note don't select enter here you have to click the search button the group will show up select add which will add the group to the lower panel and then select OK deploy any changes Add as many remote groups or even users as you want to the global administrator role. In our example, we're only adding one group called ITSEC. The second role we want to define is Security Viewer. Select Security Viewer, select Edit, and in this case, we want to add two groups. We want to add the IT Help group. and we want to edit the audit group. Select OK and deploy the changes. The appliance comes with these predefined roles. Additional roles can be created and defined and access can be granted to various components based on these tables. Defining additional roles and managing fine-grained access at this level is left as an exercise for the viewer. With these changes made, we're going to now log out of the LMI. We'll log in as Tom, which is now still an administrator. He still has access to generate and look at anything. Now we'll authenticate as Harry. Harry is an auditor and has only limited access. You already notice in the Manage System settings that several of the options have been removed as well as in the secure mobile settings and web settings. The user can view several things but will not be able to create any new configurations or components. Should the user try to perform an access that he's not authorized to, an error will be displayed and the error will tell you which feature needs to be enabled for the user to perform the operation. In addition, if a user tries to authenticate to the LMI or the REST APIs, which is not defined in any of the groups that are assigned to the roles, such as our sample user Bob, The login will not be authorized for that user and he will get a message that the login failed. This ensures security on the appliance at the authentication level. In addition of using an external LDAP, the appliance allows for the creation of groups and users on the appliance internally. Use the local user database tab to create groups and users and manage these users on the appliance. These users are stored on the appliance and cannot be accessed externally. The recommendation is to use a remote LDAP user registry and have the users managed externally including their password and any password revalidation. This completes this video on how to enable management authentication and management authorization.